Hi subscribers, developers and friends, I'm Stefan Bertosz and today's video will be about RatingDB. As usual, uh, when you are using something new, you get very excited about the new stuff, new technology. Maybe you've seen some demos uh, and you think it uh, fulfills most of your needs and you think it's the one which you are looking for. Uh, let's call it a silver bullet. In my case it was RatingDB and RatingDB is a real-time da distributed database uh, with a lot of nice features, easy to use, it has its own admin UI, it's free and so on and so on. From my point of view the nicest feature there is uh, continuous queries but as well it's that a lot of things are handled under the hood, you don't need to do much about it. It just works. Hey, <laughs> but this video is not about the good stuff. I want to share with you a real experience from a real POC. So let's start with some observations. Later on, I will also show the code and speak a bit uh, about about the example you can find all of the links and examples in the link of this video but the first thing which i want to mention is that rating db doesn't have a standard jdbc driver which a lot of uh, java guys are used to but it has a proprietary driver actually under the hood this driver is using protobuf so if you're interested into that i have some additional video about protobuf on my channel should check it out but what does that mean if it doesn't have a JDBC driver? So for example, for Java and Spring guys, it means it also doesn't have uh, Spring Data JPA support, no template, no Spring transaction support, no pooling. And what does it mean for you? <laughs> you need to code that yourself. You need to write the code to fulfill all of these things. So good luck with that. Okay, another point. Another big problem which we observed in the POC and that was <laughs> a bit disappointment is then we needed a creation of the database and the ta tables on the fly. I mean <laughs> only once on the startup of the application, I will show the code then, but basically there is still some kind of a bug there, I will as well show the bug, uh, which is not uh, fulfilled. Uh, which is not fixed and then can can do this raised condition which results in a duplicate table or database creation which is not good and you don't want that obviously this can be fixed in some startup scripts and so on yeah but if you don't want to use startup scripts but you want to handle this from the code you have a problem uh, another not good thing about writing db is that in the java documentation there is a lot of broken links you would expect a standard documentation as for the other databases but um, then another observation or program which we observed when we when we did some testing on our clusters is that there is a program with the admin ui or the proxy and actually uh, sometimes the page did uh, show the correct uh, rows or i don't know statistics or whatever then after some refresh it didn't yeah so there is some issue uh, i think uh, under the hood with the admin ui or whatever traffic it goes there and the last and it's as well the most important stuff is if you are picking your new database for cloud or for uh, no sql uh, data type database also look at the release cycle, you know, release nodes, how big is the team which supports that, how frequently are the updates, and so on. So what we observed that the team for the rating DB is very small, there's not so much support, and as well, the usage and the links which you can find on the internet with various programs are, <laughs> are just small amount comparable to the other databases. And now let's jump into the code where I would like to show you the some code which you can can use to connect to RatingDB and so on and as well some demo of RatingDB. 
So as usual, I create a simple project to demonstrate writing DB. And of course, it's with Java and Spring Boot. So first of all, what we need to do is to make sure writing DB is installed. And then basically, if you don't have the writing DB image, uh, then use docker pull writing DB. And then you can use the second command to start it up. But this will just uh, spin up writing DB like on the one node, which is not in the cluster at all. And another way which is more recommended is to spin up at least two instances. And for that, you at least for that, you should use Docker Compose or Helm chart and run it into Kubernetes, but it would be too difficult to demonstrate. So I chosen the Docker Compose. And you can do this by running the docker compose app command. So you can look at the docker compose file if, if you like. And there are really two instances which are connected. So let's try it. Yeah. So let's copy the docker compose command from that. Let's open the terminal. And if you run docker compose in the terminal, the docker will start. Obviously, if you, if you have docker desktop, you can you can go there and start it from there as well. It doesn't matter. What is important, it will start on some ports, which for the purpose of the demo, we want to see the admin UI, which is actually nice. Yeah. And to find out the ports, again, go again into the Docker Compose. You see that the first one is on 8088 and the second one is on the 8089. So in the browser, you would see that this is the first one, this is the second one. The ports are different. And because the admin UI already knows that this is the cluster, it will show you that the server has two connected clusters, which is good. Yeah? You can go to the server and see some more details if you if would like. So, writing DB is running in the cluster. As said, we have a Spring, Java Spring boot application, so we can start and run it. And what I created on the top is some kind of REST controller where we can create a new product. So spinning up Spring Boot application, it has to be on the different port than the standard 8080. Important, it should start up and log some information for us. For example, the database is created, tables created and changed are detected. Okay, let's go to the UI. So let's go to dashboard. We can refresh the page and you should see there is one table and one database. So we have database product DB created and the product, which is nice. It should be empty and the table viewer should show empty. That's good. And as we have as well, Spring Boot up running, just copy the link from the readme file and we have a Swagger UI. So what we can do is create new product Let's try it out. Let's create new product. Yeah, whatever. Let's execute. This should issue a post command. And when we want to check, either or one on the second node, we can go to the tables, product, and then via the viewer, you should see that it's saved. Cool. Or the same way we can we can list the products and so on and so on. Let's jump into code and try to explain what was needed to make this work. So basically, we need the dependencies for writing DB driver. So see this line, which specifies that. Then we wanted some code for the databases, which will be created on the startup, like create database, create table and listen to changes, uh, default table and listen to changes. How does it know where to connect? Because we already manipulated the application YAML and added some properties like localhost port and the database, which we wanted and so on. Yeah. So that is just for the purpose of the connectivity strings to rating DB. Then for rating DB, we created some wrappers. 
simple it is not production ready trust me and it has some flaws which you would need to implement to make this production ready but what is important is the way how we connect to the rating db database we are using the uh, rating db connection and rating db class and basically we are creating a connection and providing hostname port username and password and connect that's sufficient for connection there are some wrapper classes which are just for the purpose of uh, code simplification or logging or stuff like that but the most important stuff is how how you would then use this to do some operations or rating db so basically you are using this class with rating db and operations like db create db um, and it's chained so you can then if you have the db you can issue the table insert and usually the last one is run and after the run you would get some results if there are some results uh, passed back from the from the operation so in this way you can obviously get all the um, records listen to the changes listen to the changes means that there is a continuous query going on and you would receive uh, whatever updates uh, you can log it you can do with that something if you i don't know want to connect this to the gui so for the continuous queries this is a, a very handy feature which rating db has but as well some other databases anyway what is the problem the problem is that as said previously there is no support in the spring there is no connection pooling there is no transactions support with the spring so i added some tools to there so if you really wanted to use it you would need to implement it yourself obviously exception handling and stuff like that um, which means you would need to write a lot of uh, code and test code to make sure that this um, behaves correctly what as well is um, specific to rating db you can with some optional arguments influence for example how the table is created in how many shards or replicas do you want to have the table so there is a lot of switches which you can find out on the documentation page uh, but it's sometimes uh, not complete i would say when you create wrapper around these uh, classes uh, for the standard operation i think or DAOs or whatever you like to call it it would be fine at the end but still a lot of code you need to do yourself just for the purpose to use writing db there is no spring da data support no no template for that uh, no repository or whatever not that i know maybe in future but I'm not sure if somebody will request it or create it for the rating DB exclusively. And if I go back to the admin UI, admin UI accept of some read operations which you can do um, or data explorer where you can craft the queries and do stuff. You can as well, for example, manipulate the, the database or issue some special queries. There is also log entries and stuff like that so but still it is very 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 simple ui which is there um, just by running the mongodb and for the start it's very very handy but then if you need some more complicated things i think there you need to use something else like the api which they as well provide so what is the what is the actual summary or recommendation um about this technology so from my point of view rating db is maybe good for uh, like school projects or whatever small projects but for a real big project it could be a pain in your ass the technology is not widely spread uh, you know there is just small team supporting this no support for java and spring um, which can be a big issue for the for the spring spring lovers or spring guys and actually 
maybe you you will be better off when by using mongodb or dynamodb or whatever other nosql database which is like more spread on the on the current market so that's all guys if you like the video uh, subscribe for the channel or let me know what is your experience with writing db or similar databases i would be curious if you run into the similar issues and you know getting for some feedback would be fine as well thank you bye bye